Okay, let's do problem number two. Problem two. One operation of a steel mill is to cut pieces of steel into parts that are used in the frame for front seats in an automobile. The steel is cut with a diamond saw and requires the resulting parts must be cut to be within plus or minus 0.005 inch of the length specified by the automobile company. The steel.xls file contains a sample of 100 steel parts. The measurement reported is the difference, in inches, between the actual length of the steel part, as measured by a laser measurement device, and the specified length of the steel part. For example, a value of minus 0.002 represents a steel part that is 0.002 inch shorter than the specified length. Okay, uh, this is what the steel.xls spreadsheet looks like. There's this error column, and this is the uh, the, the difference from from what is from uh, what it is is supposed to be. And so zero indicates that it was right on according to the the measurement device. Question A. At the 0.05 <coughs> level of significance, is there evidence that the mean difference is not equal to 0.0 inches? Be sure to state your hypotheses. Okay, so uh, let's uh, hypothesis here, uh, our hypotheses here, the null would be um, that mu, which is uh, the mean difference of the population, is, is equal to zero, and uh, we're looking for to see if there's evidence of the alternative, which is that it is not equal to zero. So to do this, let's use pH stat, and so we can click on add-ins, go to pH stat, and go to uh, one sample tests, and we're looking at the t test for a mean, and this thing pops up, and our null hypothesis is zero, and the level of significance is 0 0.05, and we can use the sample statistics here. Down to 100. And, one. and it's a two tailed test because variances can go, the differences can go either way. Click OK. And this thing comes up. And let's see, we, we do not reject an L hypothesis. The p value is not anywhere near 0 0.05. Our uh, T statistic is um, within the lower and, and upper critical values. Okay, let's look at B. Question B. Construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the population mean. Interpret this interval. Okay, so we can do that using pH stat also. Let's go back to the data. And uh, we can do add-ins, pH stat, confidence intervals, estimate for the mean sigma unknown, and this thing pops up. And uh, let's see, we can sample statistics unknown. We can just scoop up the column here, and uh, we can just click OK. And we get the confidence interval here. This looks similar, but um, basically the sample mean is 0 0.000165. And let's make this uh, resolution here. We've got um, the. This says that the confidence interval is is this range from minus three zeros. Uh, let's say minus 0.23 times 10 to the minus fourth up to 5.6 um, positive 5.6 uh, 5 times 10 to the minus four and the sample mean is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus four so the sample mean is in between the confidence interval here and uh, close to zero uh, uh, quite a bit closer to zero. So, um, so that's that's the interpretation of that of this this uh, chart here. 
So, uh, question we, C, compare the conclusions reached in questions A and B. In, in both of these, the, the mean fell within the confidence interval. So it's, so it's not outside the confidence interval. So uh, we have no evidence to, um, to support that the, that, that the conclusion that the, that the uh, we have no evidence to support that the alternative hypothesis is true. Uh, the, and we reached the same conclusion here because um, the, if we look at the p-value, it's, it's not less than 0 0.05. And so the probability that we reject the null, if you look at this data here, is would be um, 1 minus uh, 0 0.4, which would be you know 59% or something, which isn't isn't high at all. So that's uh, that's that. That's what the comparison uh, tells us. Question D. Because n equals 100, do you have to be concerned about the normality assumption needed for the t-test and t-interval? Uh, no. If, if it's greater than 30, if the number of if the number in the sample is greater than 30, uh, then we don't we can treat the data as though it's normal. So that concludes problem two.